Hello everyone, I am Torior and today we're going to talk about episodes 3 and 4 of Star Trek Discovery. I tried making this video already, but I was very tired and it turned out to be a long boring rant, so I'm redoing it. Long story short, episodes 3 and 4 are still pretty bad, although not as bad as episodes 1 and 2. First, let's quickly discuss the story. Michael Burnham, the main character of the series, gets uh, off a prison transport after her court-martial, she gets onto the Discovery and is invited to join the crew by the captain. It turns out Discovery is doing some scientific experiments. Uh, yeah, there's going to be massive spoilers in this. Uh, scientific experiments on magic space mushrooms that will let it teleport everywhere in the galaxy. It also has a sister ship that's doing the same research. The sister ship gets uh, kind of blown up. Well, no, everybody dies on board. Uh, they go to investigate. And on board they find corpses, Klingon corpses, and a magic space bear creature, which I... yeah, there's like a picture here. So they take it all back to Discovery. Did I mention that Michael Burnham gets invited to join the crew even though she's a mutineer? Yes, I think I did. Uh, then they study the creature, some people die, and they get a... They get a distress call, they're supposed to come and save the colony, but nobody's in range, so they need to make the teleporting drive system work. And the main character, Michael Burnham, figures out that the space bear creature that eats magic space mushrooms is the key to navigation, hooks it up to some weird-ass equipment, and they are able to teleport the whole ship and save the colony. That is the plot, in a nutshell. Now, there are new characters, there are old characters, and there's, well, there's a lot of stupid as well, but also it's not as bad as previously because it's not filled with explosions like the first two episodes, and there is a bit of story. So, first the characters. We have uh, this guy that used to be the science officer, now he's the first officer. We have, a second, we have the new captain, and this captain is actually quite cool. He is supposed to, to find a way to stop the Klingons, and he's doing it no matter what, and he doesn't really seem to care about anything, and stuff did give him the authority to do all that. And I have no problem with the actor, he plays, uh, he plays his part well. We also have the old character of this redhead, I, mean, I don't know what her name is, but she was on the previous ship and she got injured or whatever, and now she has cybernetic implants. Now, um, there is also the science guy. I'm not, not really sure if he is the chief engineer, the science officer, or just a, scien a scientist that is on board. I don't think that was explained clearly, although I might be wrong. I might have just missed the fact. Anyway, I have no problem with him. He is quite interesting and unique looking. Seems like he has very dark eyes, which is, um, well, at least he's very easy to distinguish from all the other crew members. And... There's also the comic relief character, who I call uh, the Jar Jar Binks of Star Trek Discovery, uh, this girl. And the thing about her is she's very, very quirky. She's so quirky that is basically the only uh, personality trait she has. And there is also a very stupid security officer that is also poorly cast, I believe. Uh, but fortunately, spoilers, she gets killed in episode 4, so that's not a problem. Uh, she is the woman in the middle. <clears throat> and I have two problems with her. First of all, the character is really, really stupid. Uh, remember the space bear? Yeah, she, open, she opens the cage and the bear kills her. There's a bit more to the story, but basically she's an idiot. Even though she's supposed to be the security chief. Also, I think she's very badly cast, because the security chief on the Starfleet vessel is regularly engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat and so on. And if you want to cast a woman, fine. If you want to cast a man, fine. Just cast someone muscular who looks like they can take care of the job and actually, you know, fight a Klingon warrior or whatever. This is why Brienne of Tarth works so well in Game of Thrones, because she actually looks like she can get the job done. Um, still... This character gets killed off in episode 4, so I really don't have a problem with her. And that is basically it. Also, we get a short plot of the Klingons in the middle of episode 4, but it's pretty boring and there's not much interesting going on. 
there apart from the fact that the albino Klingon is facing some problems and he confirms that they have eaten the corpse of uh, the previous captain played by Michelle Yu, which means she's not coming back as herself but maybe as holograms which we see a bit later on. Now, as for the story with the space bear and magic space uh, mushrooms that let them teleport anywhere, I don't really find it uh, to be a problem. Um, it's in good Star Trek fashion to do weird stuff, so that's that's okay. Uh, the problem that I have with uh, episodes 3 and 4 that there's really a lot of stupid. Uh, we have already mentioned uh, the security officer. Wait a minute, I have, I have a screenshot of her. Yeah, basically they keep the space bear in a cage and and they study it and the security officer decides she's gonna uh, she's gonna sedate it with an anesthetic she has no idea if it will work uh, michael burnham the main character also points it out she still opens the cage and the bear well i'm calling it a bear but it kind of looks like it uh, attacks her and mauls her to death and she's dead which was really really stupid of her as a security chief that's supposedly not an idiot, but apparently she is. Uh, maybe she was just an idiot and the captain was glad to be rid of her, because when she dies he doesn't give a crap. He just goes on. And that's a big contrast to Picard, who would basically cry over every dead crew member. Uh, but that behavior fit Picard and this behavior fits this captain, so that's not really a problem for me. The other very, very stupid thing is that in episode 3, there's a secret, secret lab with the magic space mushrooms, and the security system for this lab is a breath print. I think it's one of the stupidest things I've seen in a long time. Uh, even a keypad or um, a metal key would be better. Because the main character is supposedly very smart because she figures a way to bypass the system by using a napkin and collecting some saliva from her colleague uh, that's sleeping and thus cheating the breath print system. Honestly, that was... I think she, we're supposed to think she was very clever for figuring that out, but I, I think it was pretty obvious to like every other person watching the show that yeah, this can be beaten easily. And yeah, they have voice recognition in Next Generation, that can be beaten theoretically, but even the keypad would have been better, and yeah, any code, like, or a key, or a retina scan or something, even fingerprint scans, but a breath print is just stupid. Uh, still, my problem with the story is uh, much smaller than with the previous episodes because there's less explosions and actually some weird Star trek -y science. Also, there's a weird cyborg for some reason, still unexplained. Okay, mm, what else do I have here? I do have some, screenshot, mm, some screenshots. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So, my problems with it are... But I really don't like Michael Burnham anymore because she turned she turned annoying somehow. Oh, also she is uh, uh, the old science officer now. First officer refers to her as the smartest officer he's worked with, which is just weird because she's clearly not very smart. Um, at least she doesn't make good decisions. And then she is tasked with helping. Well before all the, you know, space mushroom events. She's tasked with uh, helping fix some computer code, which is also quite a bit <laughs> of stupid, because uh, either don't show the code itself or make it look like actual code. To anyone with any basic experience in programming, it's pretty obvious that the problem with this code is that it's all commented out, and also it doesn't look like proper code for what she's talking about. Still? Still, so, uh, yeah, just uncomment the code and it'll work. Uh, and that is basically it when it comes to the characters and the story. Oh, right, at the very end, uh, she, well, Michael Burnham, gets the last will and testament of the previous captain, played by Michelle Yu, uh, and it's a little bit of an emotional moment when the old captain suggests that she probably has her own command now and so on but she doesn't because she mutinied and basically got her captain killed so yeah the series acknowledges mm, her failings kind of i i suppose i'm fine with that 
although it was a bit over the top, maybe. Still, uh, in conclusion, this episode, these two episodes, three and four, are not as bad as one and two. Still pretty bad in terms of, you know, the, the stupid stuff like opening the force field or, or the breath print. And still not great with the characters, because, yeah, she, for example, has no personality apart from being quirky. Also, she disobeyed orders and goes behind her superior's back because her roommate mutineer asks her to. I'm not sure if such a person has a, a place on a military science vessel, or whatever Discovery is supposed to be. Still, in general, it it is an improvement over the old ones. But still, this is my least favorite Star Trek sh um, show so far. But I am willing to give it a chance and assume that maybe the beginning was just a big blunder and it will get better and it will develop some self-awareness, some self-awareness. Now, I don't really think that will happen, but one can hope, right? And I do love this, the concept of Star Trek itself, so I really do hope that this gets better and more interesting. And as for magic space mushrooms uh, that let you teleport all over the galaxy, uh, I think we've seen weirder stuff in Star Trek. So um, surprisingly, I'm 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 actually cool with that. Uh, anything else? Well, there's all the political stuff surrounding uh, the series, where both sides kind of complain. Uh, you know, with uh, I don't think I want to get into that. Basically, the series kind of wants to interject itself into the political divide in America today. And that's... I, I suppose Star Trek has a long history of meddling in politics and, you know, promoting uh, ideologies. Still, it, it's so volatile in the US right now that I really don't want to see that in my entertainment because I see it everywhere else. But that's just my personal opinion. Also, I don't really like the new Star Trek because it's not an optimistic, cool future. It's more like a dystopian one. But again, hopefully it will get better. There's one thing that gives me gives me hope again that it will actually get better is that the theory is circulating on the net that Star Trek Discovery is supposed to be the story of Section 31, the mysterious Black Ops autonomous Starfleet organization that we meet in Deep Space Nine. And if it turns out that way, they might actually make it interesting. But so far the show suffers from too many explosions, too shallow characters, uh, relatively lousy writing and and some stupid, like, you know, like the decisions made by the security officer or the breath print stuff, or how the war with the Klingons started, and so on. But episodes 3 and 4 are definitely an improvement over 1 and 2, even though they're still pretty bad. So I hope this this stops being horrible. I'm actually optimistic. Uh, after episode 1 and 2, I didn't think I'd ever be optimistic or enjoy the show, uh, but now I think it's a theoretical possibility. And that's pretty much everything I have to say about Star Trek Discovery so far. I I'll probably make more videos later. Right, see you soon.